Tiani 93.7 The Beat, H Towns Red Hip Hop, home of the Breakfast Club. My name's Ashley, and one of my favorite newer people is in here. And I, right. I have been a stand for approximately two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it is Guap Dad 4000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome I'm, to the Armani Army first. Thank of all. you. Yeah. I'm a little mad you don't want to do rec today, though. Um, but it's fine. You know, <laughs> I, can't, I can't always do that. It's going to become more like a, a costume than like a fashion. Thing. True. I'm not in the pigeonhole with myself. My nephews uh, asked for two of the Silk City do rags. So I just gave them my credit card number and I don't know what they did with it. Did they order them from Guap Dad for $1,000? Yes, they ordered the two hoodies. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure they ordered two, two, uh, two do rags. Yeah. But when I was telling you earlier, they showed me. So my nephews are the ones who put me on you. Yeah. And they're 17, they're twins. They live, I'm from Tacoma, Washington. Of they, that's where they live. Why? What do you mean, of course? <laughs> I'm from Not the West there. Coast. <laughs> that's true. And um, they showed me your Flossin video when it first, first, first dropped. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is the kid who lost a bet to Drake? Like, and I was like, he's not really getting toppy in a video. They're like, no, no, it's real, it's real. And then I saw in your No <laughs> Jumper interview, you're like, nah, straight meat and mouth at that point. I'm like, nah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I gotta fuck with this kid, so. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was straight ham the cheeks at that point. <laughs> so after that, did more research into you. You're half Filipino, mm -hmm. so I'm like, all right, my half Islander brethren here. Yeah. You're from the Bay, and then you dropped Flossin. No, you dropped. You were on the Re Revenge of the Dreamers. Yeah. Soundtrack, and then I was like, all right, we, we gotta fuck with this kid, so. Yeah. I want to welcome you to the world of radio. Fire. I know you've been on radio before, but our heart's a whole different beast, sir. Okay. So. Okay. Once you get put on, like, one or two, you get put on 800. So okay. So, we're going to move you into that. Let's do it. <laughs> into that realm. First off, how do you feel about your boy Pacquiao? Um. <laughs> Last one. night. I know. You Did you have faith in him? Because I didn't. I, he'll, he'll never I, first of all, didn't even know about the fight. Oh, you're not into And also, on the side, I'm a Keith Thurman fan. So... When I found out he lost, I was like, oh, he lose too. And then I see his pack out. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Either way, I still win. It was like the when Mayweather and Pacquiao fight. Either way, I won. Why? Because I'm black and Filipino. Wow. <laughs> I can't really do that because I'm black and Simone, except for, like, with The Rock. Ain't so nobody from the fight, y'all. Because <laughs> <laughs> you fight in a family. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as you fight one. First of all, probably the fist would be as big as a family. So why would I want to get hit with 12 generations? I mean, if it makes you feel better, <laughs> I don't associate that much with my Samoan side. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to have to deal with some niggas like, oh, <laughs> on See, the other side. That's that's even worse. So you're in Houston for, <laughs> for Trade Day weekend. <laughs> you're in Houston for Trade Day weekend. Yes. Um, I know that you you know, you know have family out here, but what is like your connection? Because Houston, like, really, I feel like you'd be out in Texas a lot. I mean, it's really because my little brother Jigga Juice lives out here, mm -hmm. and he went to school out here partially, so the, the connections that he made over time kind of became my connections. And so, you know, and I used to come out here to do business before I was taking music seriously, so I know some people out here. It's do cool. Business. I like Texas, and I love Texas music. Do music? Like, do business as a music business, or the scam no. and shit? Other stuff. <laughs> The, we're not going to incriminate you shit going on right now. Uh, how did you meet Trey? Just from that? From coming um, out here? I met Trey via Instagram. Like, I pretty much met everybody else. Mm -hmm. Just Instagram. I forgot. Either he hit me up. Oh, no. You know what? He reposted a video a while back. And I DM'd him. Like, oh, man, Trey, you a legend. Shout out to Houston. Fuck with you. He was like, nah, man. I checked your shit out. Like, you actually could really rap. Yeah. You hard. But you, this video is also hella funny, so I'm gonna tag you in it. Now that I know who, who your is. page is. Which one was it? Do you remember? Um, it it was one of them. It's been a lot. <laughs> it was one of. It them. was one of. Them. One of the ones that passed. My favorite one, and I'm only a two week member of the Armani Army, mm -hmm. is the I'm not feeling any broke shit this year. The Pokemon. The classic. Back. That's the classic. That's the classic. That's, That's the Dragon Ball Z season one. Never gonna get better than that. You just kind of try to imitate that type I know. shit. I replay it. I put it on my story probably like every day. Mm -hmm. Just different parts. Like all y'all are broken to mind. Yeah. Not fucking with y'all. Blocking you out of my life. All my like older bosses be like, 
Who the fuck is this kid? I'm like, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's sure. always like that. Your older boss is here, right? Not all around the country. So I don't know if Mikey told you, um, I'm part of the music team for I Heart National. So mm -hmm. like, we we have a certain amount of stations that we make the playlist for, i.e. me and someone else. So, say like random places like Mississippi and shit. <laughs> like, I'll help put music on stations around the country and then I do it for this station. Fine. So my bosses are the ones in New York, in LA, and Chicago the whole white guy. shit. No, they're actually black. What? Yes. <laughs> in New York, the PD is Thea. She's a black woman. She went to the HBCU. That's hard. In LA, did you meet Doc? At real? The older dude who's like really buff. Um, well, no. He's like the head of our entire He really thing. buff and he a nigga? Yeah. Nah, uh -uh. <laughs> I didn't. He's tall. And then our boss here, Michael Saunders, he's black. We do have a few white PDs, but we try to keep them our skin shade. Yeah, that's saucy. Company. As much as we can. Also, I heard more about you because my friend Stock, Skateboard Kane, mm -hmm. he was here last week. He mm -hmm. played me, I don't know what I'm allowed to say. He played me a video y'all have together that... It had, it, it was Hey Me New People. Mm-hmm. That's that song. And is that, that's supposed to be on his project? I don't know. Up? What are you doing with it? <laughs> it's his stuff, though. He played it for me, and he played me his whole project, and I was like, the one with you, that's the that's the radio hit. Mm -hmm. But he's like, I don't want to be, like, capping, or, like, cloud chasing, because he's popping now. I'm not trying to, like... Come out the gate with Stocks that. Stocks always saying some old, <laughs> <laughs> soft stepping ass. Look, hey, I go. It go like this with me. Everybody that I grew up with got one musical moment that I will smash on my management and be the be the boss that I'm supposed to be, the captain of the ship type shit. Like, no, this is flying. I'm clearing it. We're clearing it. Mm -hmm. As long as there's a plan behind it. Only other person who can do that like at his own discretion it probably is jigger because i i never tell him no yeah but like everybody else gotta have they whatever they think the one is and that's how we start off and if it works it works and if it doesn't i'm down to try again later on but like then stocks no it's a go but whatever <laughs> he want to do with that yeah yeah he could do oh i heard it has he played it for you the whole the whole project i've i've heard probably 90 percent of the project okay um, w around the time he was finishing, cause Stocks like already is two projects in. Yeah. So when he was finishing this one, I started to mix mine, so I didn't hear a lot of like the finals. But I I, I mostly heard everything. Okay. Yeah. Cause he played me. He says he has like more lined up. He has like four or five lined up. Stocks is a. It, he will is a manager's dream. I know. If I was as organized as Stocks was, oh my god. <laughs> It'd be crazy. Well, but I'm, I'm too. I'd be on some rock star shit. Though. I'm proud of him though. We met through like DMs. Like mm -hmm. everybody, that's that's the hustle these days. Yeah. Because once some DMs are open once, they open for that five. Yep. <laughs> so you cannot ignore my message yep. after you open this shit. So you are uh, you're performing at a festival in Dallas, right? Or yeah, Frisco yeah, yeah. coming up. You just got announced on Mala Luna in uh -huh. San Antonio. Yeah. You're on Rolling Loud. Yeah. <laughs> You're on the Vegas one. Uh-huh. And after Vegas. Vegas. Is that like the new wave? Because we, we have this conversation that artists don't need to do their own tours. They just need a festival hop. I mean, I, if if you if you was really about your paper, you'd be doing both. Mm -hmm. um, but that, why wouldn't it be the new wave? There's so many new festivals coming up, and there's actually a festival season now throughout the year so like i would suggest you hop on everything that your agent could get you booked for during mm -hmm. festival season to do shows in between and then tour after you don't think there's like a oversaturation of them of people course are like, like well i'll i'm only gonna spend my money to go to this one can't go to this one then this one gets announced the next week and they're like fuck <laughs> like yeah i mean but that's a good thing about not being invested in the market but the, that same market would have to invest in you for you to be a part of it. If that oversaturation doesn't roll over into my brand. So I, that's just more shit that I could get booked for. Keep the money and then if they blow up, they blow up. It ain't, it ain't on me. <laughs> <laughs> I came and I did my thing. That's what yeah. I got paid to do. <laughs> um, but it is a lot. I feel like it's just, a, it's just like music though. A million something songs get up, up, uploaded to the internet like daily. Mm -hmm. 
it's all it's, it's extremely oversaturated, but artists still find success. So I feel like it just depends on the brand of the festival. You just gotta stand out. Yeah, pretty much. If you if you, whatever you're doing specifically at your shit is crazy, then like people will come back. Yeah, and want to see you on other ones. Mm -hmm. So you can travel the country. Speaking of that, we spoke a little bit how I got put on to you. Yeah. And I feel like it was divine intervention. <laughs> because my nephews, we were driving from Tacoma to the Bay. Mm -hmm. We stayed in Berkeley in the marina. Mm -hmm. But my cousins live <laughs> my cousins live in East Oakland. Mm -hmm. And they were like, yo, go off dad, you're a go off dad. I'm like, I, I know who he is. Like I saw the video, the Drake video. But they're like playing your music like them. Like you, Pilo, just like all these features that I didn't realize you were on. Mm -hmm. And then we got into this conversation like, the bass popping musically, but it doesn't feel like they get that recognition. Oh, it's always going to, it's always that way. Probably but be that way they brought up specifically like the Double XL cover. Not just this one, but like everyone, you don't see Bay artists on it. Yeah, like ever. But That's why? why I was so juiced when Kamaya was on it. Yeah. I mean, because, um,. Well, one, I got uh, two things to say. Mm -hmm. There's never been a Bay Area artist on Double XL because, I mean, not never, but they they usually are rare because the success of Bay Area artists be so regional, mm -hmm. and I don't, I feel like they try, they at least try to go on a global or pseudo global scale, like fake bigger than just the national, but the really national, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and two, as of recent, like the whole freshman thing is a dying, is like a dying thing. Is when you think about their whole business model for that, it's kind of flawed because the only way that's relevant is if the artists that make it post about it. Yeah. Like period. So who, as a, if I'm a business owner and I need this to be a thing because we've still been trying to do this, I'm only going to get the most relevant people at the time mm -hmm. to be on the cover, to then push the cover. So if you're not one of the like 10 people that went viral and like the one girl they tried to throw in there, even though <laughs> the last cover had a few, mm -hmm. um, and like the one super boom bap dude, like you're not going to make it on there. Yeah. They say it's for, oh, we think that these people got could have global coverage and long careers, but no. Because if they pick the actual people with long careers, um, those people would have the social media push to make the cover like a coveted thing. You yeah. Know? I saw how they, they break it up this year and they do the pitches first to do that. Because mm -hmm. all artists are like, yo, go vote for my pitch, go watch my pitch. Yeah. And then they look at that shit and they're like, okay, then you, you take in the viral factor of say the baby like mm -hmm. his shit's been booming the whole time if he wasn't on that cover there'd be a problem yeah but then you look at like blueface yeah and, like i love blueface that's my guy but people are like how did he make it over like here they talk about yellow bz maxo maxo's from here whatever but why do you think y'all get like looked over <laughs> all the time even though some of the hottest people come out of the bay yeah y'all set trends but it's like no one ever gives y'all your credit. You know, I feel like um, there's just definitely a lack of infrastructure back home. Mm -hmm. Like we found out a way to pay ourselves really easily and get rich within our own environment, but it really don't spread out like that. Like you don't even see a lot of the popping bay people like that's coming up and being popping like in LA where everybody else is mixing. Mm -hmm. They just be back home, and if they do pop out, it's like it's not like a thing, you know. Yeah. So, I think it's just a, a a mix of politics and generally people not understanding it. The words that I make up and the way that I talk and shit like that, people don't get until like somebody uses it in their own context, or it becomes like a meme, or. They friend says it, and then they see him laugh about it. So then they like, ah, oh, for that, okay. It's like people. It goes over people's head. Yeah. But that's just how it always been. I feel like we just too advanced when it comes to sauce making. All, all our sauce materials is just too is too exclusive. Mm -hmm. 
is out of this world. Uh huh. It's in Area 51 right now. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We get into, um, I think the biggest thing around your name right now is obviously Revenge of the Dreamers 3. Mm -hmm. Everyone's kind of, you're being introduced on a larger commercial scale. Uh huh. Because people know you from like internet, but they're like, oh, he's like actually a serious yeah. <laughs> artist <laughs> type of thing. What in those sessions did you learn from an artist? Like, who really impressed you? Because I know you said on another interview that some niggas folded. Like, mm -hmm. they could not compete under that pressure. I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> like, folded. Yeah. But who was someone who maybe you were like, damn, this nigga is really like a fucking alien. Like, how um, they're, they're pumping out music and everything. Well, shit. Other than me and Buddy, who, who was doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um... He had a head start on me though, because he was there a day before me. But I was really impressed by Jid, because this was our first time, well, second time in the studio together, but like really doing multiple songs. Yeah. Um, I wasn't a J. Cole fan before this, mm -hmm. and I was impressed by Cole heavily. I, I definitely felt like legendary status from him once he, you really see him pin something. It's, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. You realize why he goaded, like how he is. Um, and it was a lot of people, man. Uh, the homie Deontay was crazy. Saba is like ridiculous. And Smino is really like God level at anything melodic. Yeah. I promise you. Yeah. He, he so, he, it, was, it was blowing me away what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Masego. Oh yeah. Masego crazy. <laughs> he come in and play every instrument in the room ever. Take random wooden strings and make an instrument from scratch and that's the Masego guitar. And he play the Masego guitar <laughs> while he do the saxophone. Yeah. Masego's crazy. Those, those are some people I would expect. Is there any mm -hmm. that y'all gonna have to release like Nas did like 10 years later? Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Wale, when I was watching the vlogs, because I am a real Armani Army fan right now, mm -hmm. Um, I saw you Lieutenant. doing. Yeah. <laughs> is that a high? Or is it like Sergeant? Is that it? I'm so bad. My brother's in the Marines too. I don't fucking know. Honestly, um, I don't know either. I just, <laughs> I just really set a random ranking and hope that you well, fuck with that. Lieutenant, <laughs> we'll fuck with that right now. Uh, but in the vlog, you were doing a verse with Wale. Mm -hmm. Is that for his project? Or your project? Or. Man, I don't. It just goes somewhere when it's, <laughs> when it's done. <laughs> I don't. I, hold on. I, I don't even remember how that. Sh what do you do you remember how the beat sounded? He said something about Irish Spring, and <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah. Let me see if I can find it. Then I can tell you what was Irish Spring. <laughs> oh, Irish Spring clean and left my demons in the tub. Yes, there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got that. Hold on. That's the that was the most captivating part. Man, no, that sh that shit was crazy. It was like um, I walked in and he was in there with uh Chris, with Young Chris from from the Young Guns, mm -hmm. and um, I was like, damn, that's random but kind of legendary. What y'all doing <laughs> here? He's like, we just rapping. So he was like, yeah, get on it. And I I hadn't met. This is my first time ever meeting Wale. We never spoke heavily prior to yeah. this. And first like two minutes into me being in the room. Not even two minutes, like 45 seconds. He like, get on it. So I was like, all right, just punch me in. Yeah. <laughs> and we did that. And then that just happened. I don't know what he's doing <laughs> with that. I think he might drop it as a one-off. Okay. I don't know if it's on his album. I got some other stuff that's on his album for sure. I found it. Just going back and forth. It's, it's a beautiful song. Yeah. Well, I I like that song, and I like something that you're working on with Pilo. That's a guy. Conversation. <laughs> man, we was we was just getting drunk before this event. I think it was this Empire event. My mom called me. She got away. <laughs> it was an Empire event. We was getting drunk, and uh, Mansa, mm -hmm. who's on my album, is is like my little bro super talented and he just like pressed the key 
and it was like a bass line. It was like doom, doom, doom. And then Pilo just came, put a snap on it, and I said, bounce it. The beat's done. <laughs> That's rap. And then we did the most out of pocket, literally disgusting song ever. Like raunchy? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like Yin Yang Twins. Yeah. You ain't twenty. That's that's mild though. In twenty nineteen. I mean, it was that vibe, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm out of pocket on there. I'm letting you know. Hmm. You don't have that. You don't have that preview. Pilo has that. <laughs> I got here, Paolo. Uh, if I can find it, hold on. Let me see. I'll hit up. No. Okay. This is. That was a beat. It reminds me of the whisper song. I told you. Yeah. Hey, 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 <laughs> I cannot call the car. You lift? Mm hmm. Okay. I had to what petition the fuck you to get back on a, to lift, though. What'd you do at Uber? You're fucking in the car? No, I didn't do anything with Uber and calling an Uber or anything, <laughs> which is why I would like them to respond back to, to my email petitioning to get my account back. I'm completely innocent. In so they just way. randomly. I had no idea who was calling those cars. I had no idea who would even want to take a full Uber Black XL from L.A. to the Bay. I would never do that. i just buy a plane ticket. Oh, you kept canceling shit. Okay. No, it wasn't, it wasn't things getting canceled. It was somebody had hacked my account and mm. was calling huge, like, black cars and just driving them all around at crazy distances. Six-hour drives and stuff of, like that. So you that haven't scammed. Do. You haven't finessed. Yeah, I was finessed. It was, <laughs> definitely was not me. I had nothing to do with that over giving me my account back. I mean, the last thing is I saw you just tweeted uh, other day ago, really recently, that you need to raise 18K mm -hmm. and you need some features. I'm not an artist. I don't need features. But I do need drops. So okay. we'll see how much you're trying to like finesse me for that. Finesse, finesse. <laughs> <laughs> we here. can just drop right after this. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> I, you, and, but the 18k wasn't for features though. I got all my features for free. But you said you need 18k to put your album out, so you're like, who wants to work? Pretty much. Right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Nigga, I know context. I'm okay. gonna be researching shit, bro. <laughs> are you, uh, are you into like a Marvel universe? I know you said you only watch cartoons though. So. Oh no, of course. You are. So Mahershala. Yeah, it's Blade. Is Blade. Yeah. What you about to be dressed up in? When Blade comes out. First of all, <laughs> I, 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 all I gotta do is put my Jodeci reunion fit on. And that's already the blade fit. Long leather it, trench. With no shirt. Mesh mesh uh, okay. mesh neck black shirt under there. Black leather pants. Oh my god. Don't I, have me zip up the boots. I call them the oil slick boilers. Don't have me step out in them things. <laughs> Cause then it's a wrap. Bruh. And we bring in a, a personal grill to the movies and making burgers for all my niggas in there. Shout out to Wesley. Just seen him at the bowling alley. In there sucking at bowling, but he's still a legend. <laughs> oh, he was at the celebrity thing with Trey? Oh, no, he wasn't out here. I'm from uh -oh. LA. Have you seen Mike Tyson yet? Uh, uh, uh. Oh, Trey says Mike Tyson's out here, but I have yet to see him. I was randomly <laughs> at a UFC fight that Mike Tyson was supposed to be at, and I never seen him. Because Star Lord was there, speaking of Marvel movies, Chris yeah. Pratt was there. And I was like, oh, Star Lord. And I got distracted. I love how you call them by their, like, Celebrity name because I'm a, I love it. <laughs> Nigga, you forever saw the Lord. Bro. Yeah, you saw the Lord <laughs> for real. Well, we're gonna do some drops off air. It's probably about one of my favorite artists right now. I repost Flossin like all the time. I always um, repost it when I see you do that. That is true. He followed me on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I was so excited about it because I was like, "Fuck y'all, man. Fuck Drake, <laughs> bro. Care about what that, bro." <laughs> 
But we're going to show them a good time in Houston. Until then, I'll make sure you follow. Everything's swapped out for a thousand, right? Everything's swapped out yeah. for a thousand. Yeah. YouTube. I don't use Snapchat. A lot of people be getting snaps from me. It's not me. <laughs> I haven't used Snapchat in years. So I, I open that app. I don't even know what's going on on there. So somebody finessed them. Yeah. But until then, we're going to finish. What are these called? The guap. Guapmosis. Guapmosis. We're going to finish our guapmosis. He added more orange juice to his. He cheated. I what had to fill it up. With, with just pure orange juice? I ran out of champagne by the time I poured mine. I really try to get you Hennessy, but Texas has these fuck ass alcohol laws <laughs> for Sunday. Hey, man, that's. I'm in the state, so I'm not going to say fuck Texas, but Listen. when I get to California, I feel that way. Alcohol is like, <laughs> alcohol's like Chick fil A out here. <laughs> Fucking clothes on Sunday. That's but. crazy. <laughs> Until then, it's Wap That 4000 on the all new 93.7 The Beat. Game.